This is Optimal Startup Daily, episode 869, Manage Conflict, by Karen Bridboard with Gottman.com. And I'm your host, my name is Dan, and I'm here with you every single day, including weekends and holidays, reading from these great blogs on entrepreneurship. And let's jump right into our Thursday post as we optimize your life. Manage Conflict, by Karen Bridboard with Gottman.com. The four horsemen are detrimental to an office environment and work culture. The fifth level of the sound relationship workplace is manage conflict. There is so much to be said about the process of conflict management amongst colleagues. In this article, I'd like to focus on the four horsemen of the apocalypse. Criticism, contempt, defensiveness, and stonewalling. Identified by Dr. Gottman in his research with couples to predict divorce with over 90% accuracy, The four horsemen can be present in workplace relationships as well, very much undermining productivity if not actively managed. In essence, the four horsemen are detrimental to an office environment and work culture. Think about a recent conflict that you had with a colleague. Did you address it directly? If so, what was the process by which it was discussed? Did you both feel heard and understood by the other? If not, did the conflict get ignored? Did it fester? How did you speak about your differences? Was there any criticism, contempt, defensiveness, or stonewalling involved? Dr. Gottman has utilized his research findings to differentiate the masters of relationships from the disasters. In particular, he found that the disasters were different from the masters in how they talked to one another during conflict. During a conflict discussion, the masters had a ratio of 5 to 1 positive interactions to negative interactions, while the disasters had a ratio of 0.8 to 1. Quite simply, for a relationship to work, it has to be sustained in a rich climate where people are kind to each other. The masters are compassionate and take personal accountability when in conflict. They minimize defensiveness and are careful in how they express their frustration. Carl the Criticizer Carl was an executive who aired his frustrations in torpedo-like explosions directed at the character of the recipient rather than at their behavior. His criticism of his colleagues was hostile and angry. For example, he could easily yell, you careless idiot, at someone, rather than airing his grievances directed at what they actually did that appeared careless. In speaking with Carl, it was clear to me that he had every justification for feeling frustrated. However, in the process by which he expressed himself, his messages got lost, and most importantly, he lost credibility. No one was able to listen to him when they felt personally attacked. The antidote to criticism is to complain without blame. Carl needed to be able to express his frustration in a manner that others could actually hear. He learned to use a softened startup as a vehicle to bring up his frustration. Using a softened startup involves bringing up an issue in a direct, respectful, and courteous manner. Specifically, describe the situation non-judgmentally, express how you feel about it, and ask for what you need in positive terms. I encouraged Carl to monitor his heart rate and wait until he was in a more relaxed state before giving feedback. Contemptuous Kara Kara was a high performer who was not well-liked by her colleagues. Her managers could not figure out why, as she was very professional and highly competent. While she was very good at managing up, she often undermined her relationships with peers because she had an unconscious and subtle manner of communicating, I'm better than you. Her peers picked up on her contempt and responded by avoiding her. After landing in my office, Kara was surprised to learn that her colleagues perceived her as being contemptuous towards them. She was not aware of sending condescending messages, both verbal and nonverbal. The antidote to contempt is to build a culture of appreciation and respect. With her new self-awareness, Kara made changes to her communication style, including actively appreciating her peers' work. She thanked people for a job well done and expressed admiration for their accomplishments. Indeed, masters of relationships have a habit of mind where they scan their social environment for things that they can appreciate and then communicate it clearly in the moment. The disasters, on the other hand, scan their environment for other people's mistakes and try to correct them. Defensive Deborah Deborah had a tendency to justify anything that she did in a defensive manner. Her colleagues dreaded giving her feedback because she was not receptive to hearing about anything she could do differently. 
her defensiveness prevented her from climbing the corporate ladder. The antidote to defensiveness is taking responsibility, even if for only part of the problem. Deborah was perceived much more favorably once she owned her mistakes and focused on articulating strategies to find a solution. Instead of justifying her actions, she expressed how to prevent that error from happening again. This built trust with her colleagues and opened the door to greater collaboration. And Stan the Stonewaller. On the flip side, Stan had a tendency to emotionally withdraw and close himself off. Dr. Gottman calls this behavior stonewalling. When Stan's colleagues did not perform up to par, he rarely gave them the opportunity to correct their mistakes, which restricted their development and ability to learn. When stonewalling, he didn't share his frustrations and refused to address issues that he had with others. The antidote to stonewalling is to self-soothe. We stonewall when our heart rate exceeds 100 BPM and we become physiologically flooded. Stan needed to learn to calm down when interacting with individuals who disappointed him instead of getting upset and writing them off. Understanding that colleagues might not be performing up to speed for a host of reasons besides incompetence helped Stan to manage his tendency to stonewall. Their underperformance could have been a result of misunderstanding, faulty delegation, or competing demands. After becoming aware of his own physiological arousal, he found ways of calming himself down. Whether you have a Carl, Stan, Deborah, or Kara in your workplace, or you have a tendency to behave like them yourself, remember the four horsemen and their antidotes. Use them. You just listened to the post titled Manage Conflict by Karen Bridboard with Gottman.com. If your business earns millions or tens of millions in revenue, stop what you're doing and take a listen because NetSuite by Oracle has just rolled out the best offer we've ever seen. For the first time in NetSuite's 22 years as the number one cloud financial system, you can defer payments of a full NetSuite implementation for six months. That's no payment and no interest for six months. 33,000 companies have already upgraded to NetSuite, and it's number one because they give your business everything you need in real time, all in one place. And the confidence that comes with having all of your information in one place really helps to streamline decisions, saving you time, money, and energy all thanks to NetSuite's amazing offer. If you've been sizing up NetSuite to make the switch, then you know this deal is unprecedented. No interest, no payments. Take advantage of this special financing offer at netsuite.com startup, netsuite.com startup to get the visibility and control you need to weather any storm, netsuite.com startup. And a big thank you to Karen. She is a licensed psychologist and consultant in New York and New Jersey. She is a certified Gottman therapist who specializes in working with couples and organizations, as mentioned in this post. So you can check out more great articles from Karen as well as some other great content at Gottman.com. That's G-O-T-T-M-A-N.com. But that's gonna do it for this episode. I hope you are having a great day and that you enjoyed uh, the post today. And I'll be right back here with you tomorrow. And that is where your optimal life awaits.